Thanks for coming this evening. Uh, my name is Reverend Lauren Andrews, and it is my commission here this evening to tell you a few of the events that happened to me during my time on Earth here in the Sandwich Islands. I was I uh, I was born in I was born in 1795 in Connecticut, but my father was a farmer and found that he wished more fertile fields. Therefore, he settled again in Ohio. But I found the cultivation of the spirit and the mind more interesting to me, went back to the East Coast and soon earned a college degree at Stevenson College, and then enrolled in Princeton's seminary. That's in New Jersey. Now, when I was 32 in, in 1827, Several things happened all at once. In August, I married my beloved Mary Wilson uh, of the bright eyes and the quick wit. And we sired seven children together. But that is outside the purview of this discussion. <laughs> Secondly, the next month I was ordained a minister. And in two months later, in November, we set sail on a five-month journey to the Sandwich Isles under the auspices of the American Board of Commissioners of Foreign Ministries, the third group. When I arrived in Honolulu, I was given my assignment. I was to be the headmaster of a new high school, we called it a seminary, in Lahaina Luna. Actually, it was the first high school west of St. Louis. Can you believe it? <laughs> and I the headmaster. Well, the islands had Christian ministers here for ten years when I arrived, and we had done many good works, but most profound for me was we had created an alphabet and the rudiments of a text and learning and, and printing and such legibility. Why, Kamehameha III had said, mine shall be a kingdom of learning. But within my lifetime, I watched that commandment grow into the people with an astonishing ease. Why, we vied with Scotland as the most literate group of people in the entire known world. Seventy-five percent of us could read or write. West of the Rockies in America at this time? Fifty percent. I'm proud of the fact, and I contributed my fire share. Now, this was in Lahaina. Lahaina. A beautiful town, small city, spectacular, attesting to the beauties of God's creation. But beset every spring and fall by a curse. Whalers. The town exploded. Doubled inside with all kinds of riff-raff from, from off of those boats. And they had no moral scruples, no Christian uh, va vanity. It was outlawed. However, there were grogs in every corner of the town. I will not tell you the debauchery which filled that place. But let me just say the stockades were never once for new attendants. I was thankful every day that God had given me a place removed from Lahaina. Lahaina Luda indeed was above and far away looking down on the temptations of that town, so that my students were spared some of those temptations. Now, my students, this was a, 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 a partnership, really, between the missionaries and the elite, and they gave me what they promised to be the best and the brightest of the young men of the native persuasion. They did not disappoint me. I was every day astounded at their agility and their tenacious memory. Why, there was, seemed to be nothing I could throw at them that they would not only uh, understand, but hold dear and be able to recite upon commandment at any moment I wished. They were, they were voracious in their learning. Well, mathematics astounded me, but, but also, of course, geography, uh, biblical studies, of course, biblical geography, uh, uh, English, English history, American history, American cartography, geography of all kinds, the Pacific Islands, Asian history as much as I could, and when we got a, when we got a telescope, astronomy to boot. I was well pleased with these academics, and they grew into be some of the finest of the native hand. Uh, no. David Long came from my school, and as well as John Papa E, who you'll meet later in this tour. Well, my school was not without want. Principally, there were no texts, none to be had at all, nor any, any kind of charts or graphs or, or pictorial illustrations of any kind. Well, God had given me a mission, and I induced that I would indeed take this to heart and improve upon the lot. And therefore, I wrote to the commissioners in Honolulu, and they exhorted my efforts and applauded me greatly. But it took them four years to send me a press. 
Four years! And the one that they sent me was deemed unusable and undependable by the, by the press men in Honolulu. And the letters that came with it were so rounded as to prove it almost illegible. What, what, what should I do? We set ourselves to the labor. And through much travail, trial, and tribulation, thank God gave, God gave me the quality of perseverance. We endured and persevered. In fact, the very first native paper in the native language by native hands was produced at our school. <laughs> Kalama! <laughs> it spouted such special editions as Kazebra, the zebra. <laughs> Well, let me then school you on the process of printing in my day. First, a page was laid out by the first letter of the, the last letter of the last word first in reverse. And then the next and the next until the last sentence had been light, laid out from right to left. And then the next and the next and the next until finally you arrived at the last letter of the page laying it out, which was the first letter of the top first word. Not only that, but one would have to articulate how many sheets of paper were eventually going to be glued and impressed into each other to make a folio so that when they were all together there would be the semblance of a numerical order. Uh, am I making myself clear to you? I speak to myself a lot. Uh, and it's good to, to see if I am communicating to the living. So let us then assume that you have laid out the page. Next, you need ink, of course. Where was I to find ink? Well, I wrote to the commissioners. They wrote to New England. A shipment came in. The shipment was rancid. The ink was unusable, repugnant to the senses and illegible to the eyes. From then on, all shipments that came with ink were came in a powdered form, and we deduced how to put animal fat from our own animals together. Oh, yes, we had a huge farm to feed ourselves. We pers persevered. Now, after you have the, pr the plate and the ink, what do you need? Paper. Paper! Where was I to find paper in the islands? This brings me to one of my burning issues, which is that of the common stock. Thus, in everything that comes from New England is shared evenly among all the members of the, of the missionary family, each equally. No exceptions. But mine was an exceptional labor, and printing text would not only serve my school, but all schools in common. Was I not then equal to getting a, a disproportionate large part of the paper which we had? Do you see my... The commissioners also saw it, but said, oh, well, but that would not be fair to the brethren. And I said, well, then, out of desperation at our voracious use of all the paper that was supplied to me, and the inks as well, I, I reached into my own pocket, went down into Lahaina, and bought whatever inks there were, and, and whatever paper I could find from passing merchants and the like, at great expense, I may add, and brought it up so that we might continue to do the great work. And when I t appealed to the commissioners here in Honolulu and said, these are my expenses and this is what I use them for, they said, oh, it is a noble effort which you have done this, but it would not be fair to the other brethren to pay you in compensation. And the money that I spent was earned from the sale of my parents' land in Ohio when I left, and it was set aside so that my wife and I, in our retiring years, would have some nest cushion. Do you understand how this would grate on a man? And yet the texts themselves serve the entire mission. I will leave that subject for now. <laughs> I also mentioned to you there were no carts, no maps of any kind. Do you recall? I am glad to see you nodding your head in some measure. To print a F etching, it is not a press that presses, it is a press which rolls. And it rolls over a copper plate. Where was I to find such a press? <laughs> and where was I to get copper plates? Well, again, I and the blacksmith in, in the Heine became the best of friends and concocted some kind of rolling device. Now, as to the copper plates, the only thing I could find were in the holds of those whaling ships, and I bought some. They were so rough. Why, I had untold hours with my students sitting underneath the shade of the trees, rubbing and rubbing with finer and finer grit until finally they were the consistency of glass, which was required. Now, for the etchings, 
every one of the missionaries that went by to see how the work was progressing and such, I would ask, have you made drawings of other cities? And they would say, well, yes. My students were, without being schooled, took to it like fish to water. They were aptly endowed with a gift to see and replicate, see and replicate and ask questions and include details which are the only records of life in the islands at my time, taken from these drawings which have disappeared. My etchings by my students in the native hands. What? That was the only records we have of what it was to live in Kona, Hilo, or Lahaina, Lahaina Luna, of course, uh, some of the significant buildings in our school. Uh, Molokai. King Street. <laughs> what was Honolulu from the view of Punchbowl without a tree? Exceptional records. And not only that, but, but uh, copies of etchings of the faces of the kings and queens made by European masters. Uh, it goes on. Uh, there, there, every continent in the known world, uh, the Pacific I, the Pacific Ocean with all of the islands, the Hawaiian Islands where they put in the names of all the ahapua'a around each island and the meaningful volcanoes and then hand painted each one. It was a prodigious effort and I am well pleased with their results. But, Ten years into the effort, in 1843, after much soul-searching, I tended my resignation. My reasons were threefold. First of all, my own children's education had been somewhat neglected and I needed to attend to it. Second, that common stock and the attitudes of the commissioners, which in part were, well, if it's such a special work, then it did, re requires a special uh, craftsman, a, an artist who would know the labor and bring it forth and do it properly. Not like Andrews. And I suppose they would send for such a man and he would come with a press on his back with a mountain full of paper and by asking for the text he would print them up and provide them with, of course, no fee to the schools. I knew they'd never do it. They don't want to spend money on anything. And then there was the other attitude. Well, if it was such a special labor, not doesn't seem to be. Andrews has done passably well with the native help. Uh, therefore, anyone could be assigned it. Therefore, why should we give him any special attention? still burns. Thirdly, uh, slavery in the islands had been abolished with the coming of Christianity. And I was teaching the principles of love and forgiveness, Jesus Christ and the gospel. How could I in any good conscience know and receive payment from a commission which openly received and encouraged donations from states where slavery was openly practiced and accepted? I could not abide it. They did not rule by the principles of the gospel, but by the hearsay of the day. So I resigned. And though they, the commissioners tempted me with commissions, and none came through. I continued to produce an atlas of the Hawaiian Islands and also a history. I am proud of those efforts, but I found on the marketplace that my efforts could never produce enough sales to remunerate me for the effort. No profit was at hand. I made a living in those days by teaching piano and handwriting, and I was also the, the minister for the uh, seamen. My income was reduced by half. Oh, excuse me. I, uh, okay, quickly. The rest of my life. In 1845, I was called from Lahaina back to Honolulu, and I served as the Ali'i's uh, judge in terms of the foreigners, the whites. And then uh, I was also the Secretary General for the uh, Privy Council, which advised from the legislature, advised the King and the Ali'i. And then lastly, I was appointed one of the first three Chief Justices of the Supreme Court of the King. I was there for several years with John Papa'i, who we'll you meet later, my student from the High Department. When I retired, I devoted the next ten years of my life to producing the first Hawaiian language dictionary. It was produced in 1865, and I am well served by it. Some say they prefer it to any which have come since. This is a bomb for my opinion. It was a bit of a pain, after all, because by the end of my life, I was blind. And so I needed a scribe. And my good wife, Mary, served in that purpose. Three years after that, I was laid to rest here. And though I am removed from the happenings of this dear land, I am not unaware of the happenings. And it was with great pleasure that I learned and have seen a book newly published about the engravings of my students at La Luna. 
Not only that, or is it complete, but the notation is exceptional. You would learn much from perusing those pages, and I invite you to take a look. My time with you has come to an end. I hope that I have not bored you, and I hope that it has been of some informative value. May God be in your heart and take you home, and indeed.